Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Draw Their Life. And the shout out winners for the previous episode are. Thanks guys for subscribing. You guys are awesome. If you want to win a shout out, subscribe to my channel and comment that you've subscribed. And I'll announce the winners in the next episode. And today we're drawing another different video. Draw my life, Fortnite. That's right. Either you hate Fortnite or you love it. You have to admit one thing that even after two years of its release, Fortnite is still relevant. Fortnite is still the number one played game on Twitch and watch game on YouTube. And there's a reason for that. It's so massive that it beats NFL and top mainstream sports. After just two years of its release, it's gained around $2.4 billion, which is the highest amount of revenue generated by any game in 2018. And you thought it's a free game. Nope. I mean, it's kind of funny that a free-to-play game have the highest revenue, but the most intriguing thing is that even after two years, it's still on the top position. It's still maintaining its reign over other games. Even Apex, with all the hype, failed to beat Fortnite. In this video, I've discussed in detail why Fortnite was able to become so popular and why it's still able to maintain its position. But before we go into the video, let me know which is your favorite Battle Royale game. Fortnite, Apex, or PUBG? Or maybe Minecraft Hunger Games? Comment below and let's go right into the video. Fortnite was initially conceptualized by Epic Games in 2011. They announced the game and was supposed to be a cross between Minecraft and Left 4 Dead games. However, the development of the game took more time than expected. No kidding. Meanwhile, the game trends were also changing. Finally, on July 25, 2017, the Fortnite Save the World was released. Now, it's time to fight back. Sure, it'll be dangerous. But we've got massive forts. This shooter survival game didn't go much well in the market. Meanwhile, PUBG was making the gaming community go crazy. So, Epic Games thought to release another version of Fortnite by including the Battle Royale features in it. After H1Z1 and PUBG, the Battle Royale genre was getting popular in the gaming community. On the 26th of September 2017, Fortnite Battle Royale was released. This was released as a beta version. I mean, the game that became the biggest game was not even planned, it was just a test version. The game became popular real quick. Even Epic Games didn't expect their beta version to be such a hit. It got so much fame through social media, and gamers were raving about the thrilling game. Within a month, the game gained 10 million players. Epic Games had to create a separate development team for the Fortnite Battle Royale version for timely upgradation of the game. Now, let's talk about why Fortnite became so popular. Battle Royale was not new, it was already in the market, but Fortnite took it to a different level. Other games are just shoot and win, but for the very first time, Fortnite added building, which is never heard of in a game. It changed the whole style of playing a shooting game. You can't just shoot and win, now you have to build and defend. So the 1v1 battles became so competitive. Another major thing they did was emotes. Fortnite went on to become a phenomenon when several celebrities like Ninja, Drake, and Marshmello got their hands on it. It was in March 2018, a streaming event happened where Ninja played Fortnite Battle Royale with Drake, Travis Scott, Kim.com, and many other A-list celebrities, and it became the talk of the town, boosting Fortnite's popularity. This event broke viewership records and is the biggest viewed stream in Twitch that time. I got, I got 5k donation if you get this dub right now. Yeah? Oh, that. Boom! oh my god! <laughs> Following this, Epic Games arranged a Fortnite Battle Royale Pro Am with 50 pairs of streamers and professional players, matched with celebrities, which was again a massive hit. The Fortnite Pro Am, him and Marshmallow come out on top! Wow! The day that a human and a snack food were able to get the victory. 
Congratulations to Ninja and Marshmallow. And All these helped the game to gain popularity and high viewership in streaming websites. In November 2018, Bloomberg reported that Fortnite had over 200 million registered accounts across all platforms. By March 2019, the game had been played by over 250 million people and had generated over $2 billion worldwide, with an estimated 35% of those players being female. It's the highest known female percentage for any shooter game. You must be thinking, how are they able to make $2.4 billion? Well, my friends, the game is designed to take your money. They've made all the skins neutral, no special power and no upgrades, so that they can pump out different skins all week long. Not only skins, they did the same thing with the emotes, backpacks, gliders, and almost everything in the game. They stole all the trending dance moves and put it in the game so people will definitely buy them. It not only helps in the revenue, but also in the game updates. Look at Apex. After releasing characters with different skill sets and style, it's very hard to create new characters every week or even every month. It took them six months to release two new characters. In the same time, Fortnite can release like 500 new skins. Besides skins, there's emotes, backpacks, and cosmetics. I mean, where's this game going? I don't even know. In the future, they can collaborate with Gucci and sell like a $2,000 skin and people will still buy that. Hell, they even did that with Nike. You can surely roast the game for things like this, but in a business perspective, they're really smarter than their competitors. Now, let's talk about how the game managed to stay alive for so long. This basically can be divided into three categories. First one is the updates, season updates, skin updates, guns updates, and whatever that happens after season five. Planes, shopping carts, golf cart, jetpacks, hoverboards, and whatever that's going on right now. I don't know. Second is game events like Rocket Launch, Marshmallow Concert, Avengers, John Wick, all that stuff. Third one is live real world events like Pro-Am, Fortnite Skirmish, and now the World Cup. The different season and storylines make it more than a game. It feels like an ongoing TV series. From its release date till February 2017 was the first season. Second season came out in December 2017 in which the game was medieval themed. In that, for the first time, battle passes were introduced, in which players are rewarded with money to be used in the game. In February 2018, the third season came out. It was space-themed, and the battle passes tier increased to 100. Season 4 came out in May 2018. It was superhero-themed. One change that came in the gameplay was that meteorites started to appear in the sky, which will destroy the area where it falls. In July 2018, Season 5 came out. This season was themed time travel. In September 2018, the sixth season was released. This was themed Darkness and Corruption. A large purple cube with glyphs on its surface was introduced in the game world, which players nicknamed as Kevin. Seventh scene came on December 2018, which was winter themed. A large castle which was buried in the snow, the Ice King from that castle, and a lot more interesting stuff were introduced in this season. Then came the latest two more seasons, which is going on now. Along with making the game more and more interesting, Epic Games had also made sure that it's marketed well. The fact that so many celebrities were involved in the gameplay itself was a big boost for Fortnite. And they conducted on-stage gameplays, which gathered a lot of attention. From February 2018, Epic Games had been conducting regular one-week tournaments for Fortnite gameplay. It's happened in different events, many states, many countries, and was attended by gamer and sports celebrities. How well can any game be marketed? Now, in 2019, Fortnite World Cup Finals is going to take place in July. When it comes to game promotion, Epic went all out when they tied up with Marvel Studios just after the launch of the Infinity War and Endgame. And the Marshmallow Live was just crazy. I mean, nobody's ever done a live music concert in a game. And the recent John Wick event? All those things make the game more alive and fresh. Considering all the above, I don't know how long this game is going to last. It's not like they're pro at everything. They had their fair share of mistakes. They kind of made the game easy for new players and unfair for pros after a few seasons. But looking at their business and net worth, you can say it paid off. Because at the end of the day, they're still a business. If you look at current YouTube, also Twitch stats, it's in a sorry state. All the creators are mainly playing Fortnite, and it's very hard for other games to beat that. Looks like gamers are going to continue with Fortnite for a while now. 
So for now, let's sit back and watch the show. So there guys, that was the draw my life of Fortnite. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more amazing draw my life videos, subscribe to my channel guys. And I'll see you in the next episode. Till then, peace out.